Hello my dear friends, hope you all are doing very well. Today we are going to cover one of the most important topic that is accounting for share capital in the notes for the same you can get on my blog that is www.gyanvikalp.blogspot.in Now moving on to the topic share capital if someone asks us what do you mean by share capital we can simply say issue of shares by the company with the main motive to raise funds from the market is known as share capital. Share capital is of two types. Number one, equity share and number two, preference shares. Equity share actually gives its holder the right to vote and the holders of equity shares are generally known as the owners of the company. Equity shares carries maximum risk and return and in equity shares dividends are not fixed and the holders of equity shares are also known as residual owner of the company. The reason being they get dividend only after paying off dividend to the preference shareholders and after paying off all the liabilities of the company. This is why equity shareholders are also known as residual owners of the company. And in case of winding up of the company, repayment to equity shareholders are done at the end. Whatever is left after paying off to the government liabilities, debenture holders, creditors and other form of liabilities preference shareholder if something is left with the company then that amount which is which has been left will be paid to the equity shareholders in case of winding up of a company however in case of preference share preference shareholders get the preferential right to get fixed dividend over equity shareholders number one they are not the owners of the company they do not have voting right however equity shareholders have voting right and in case of winding up of the company they get repayment of their capital before equity shareholders but after paying off the liability in the form of debentures or in other form of liabilities which the company is having so now moving on to the part of equity share capital equity share capital is actually of five types Number one is authorized capital, number two issued capital, number three subscribed capital, number four called up capital and number five is paid up capital. If someone asks what do you mean by authorized capital or nominal capital, we say it is the maximum amount of capital that a company can issue or can raise from the market as per their memorandum of association. Then. For instance, take an example here, authorized nominal capital of a company is 100 crore. Then issued capital is that part of authorized capital which has been issued by the company to general public for subscription. Assume it is 60 crore or take it 40 crore because no company will want to dilute its control and ownership over its company. So they will never issue or they sometimes issue uh, shares more than 40 more than 50 percent otherwise they keep the percentage for general public up to 49 percent so i am taking here an example of 40 crore the issued capital is 40 crore then subscribed capital is that part of issued capital which has been subscribed by general public for investment in the company and here the company said gives a limitation that at least 90 percent of subscription is required otherwise the company has to take back its issue so 90 percent we are taking an example example that 36 crore has been subscribed next coming on to called up capital called up capital is that part of subscribed capital which has been called up by the company for making payment to the company by the equity shareholders or to whom the shares have been allotted so take an example if the company has made a call up to 30 crore or it can be even 36 crore then after call called up capital they are getting paid up capital paid up capital is that amount which actually has been paid by the allotee of the shares to the company it can be equal to called up capital or can be less than called up capital if the some shareholders have made default in payment of called up capital then that part of default amount is transferred to calls in area account 
CIA that we will be studying later on in this video only. So one more time I am revising this part authorized capital maximum amount that a company can issue in form of shares issued capital that part of authorized capital which the company has issued to general public for raising funds subscribed capital is that part of issued capital which has been subscribed by public for investment in that company and called up capital is that part of subscribed capital which the company has called to make payment from the investors and paid up capital is that amount of called up capital which actually has been paid by the allotee of the shares or shareholders of the company so here if someone asks it can can issued capital or subscribed capital be equal yeah of course it can be equal sometimes subscribed capital get greater than issued capital that is the case of over subscription of shares that we will be studying in this video only or in this chapter only later on second it comes with can subscribed capital and called up capital be equal or can called up capital be greater than subscribed capital then the answer is that called up capital can be equal to subscribed capital but called up capital can never be greater than subscribed capital or issued capital then the next question comes up can called up capital be equal to paid up capital of course called up capital and paid up capital can be equal but paid up capital can never be greater than called up capital in certain cases when shareholders make payment in advance then in that case paid up capital becomes greater than called up capital and that advance part goes into calls in advance account that advance amount or the amount which has been paid in advance before making call by the company is known as calls in advance and when sometimes some shareholders or some allottee of the shares make default in making payment of called up amount then such default amount goes into calls in arrear account calls in arrear account 